Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to set up integration between a GitHub source control repository and your Azure web app such that whenever you pushed code into this repository, that it would automatically update the web app. Uh, now, this is a little bit dangerous because uh, you're pushing things into production and your users might be using it, and there might be some mistake in there, and your users might be caught off guard. It's probably a good idea to test things in Azure before you move them to production. And the way you can test in Azure is through a deployment slot. You set up uh, a, a staging area or a testing area that the public doesn't see, but your testers can see, and they make sure that everything is okay. And once they've confirmed that it's okay and running in Azure, then they can push it to production. And this is really nice because you can set up a, uh, a deployment slot in Azure that is running on essentially the same hardware and the same platform, the same infrastructure as your production is. So that's a really, really good test. The way we do that is through deployment slots. And I've already created a web application here, and I've created a source control repository here in GitHub, and in fact, it's tied to, uh, this is the code right here that I pushed into it. This is just a, a basic ASP.NET application. And you'll notice that if I go back to the Azure Web App and I click on it here, you'll notice it just has the regular, uh, the default page that, that it's created when you create an Azure Web App on here. So rather than deploying directly from this source control to, to the web app to production, what I want to do is I want to uh, create a deployment slot. And by default, there's only the production ones, but I can add a new one, add a slot. And I'm going to call this one staging. You could call it testing. In fact, you can create multiple ones if you want to. And I'll click on add right here. It just takes a few seconds to create this extra slot, which will be listed over here. And there it is. Notice it's a hyperlink. And if I click that hyperlink, now I get an overview page, not for my web app, but for my web app slash staging. This is, in fact, the staging deployment slot. In fact, there's a spe separate URL for it over here. It looks just like the default URL for the production site. Notice this one was, um, I don't have it open anymore, but this one was something like DG test webapp.azurewebsites.net. This one is DG test webapp dash staging. This part here is different. So that's what I'm going to use here for my uh, staging site. And again, it doesn't have anything in it yet. I want to deploy to that. But here in the staging site, I can go down here to the deployment center and tell it I'm getting my code from GitHub and then walk through the same steps I did in the last video, where I specify that I'm signing as David GR. That's the GitHub account that I want. The repository I want is called DG Test Web App, right here. And I'm going to deploy the master branch. Click on Continue and click on Finish. And it'll take a few seconds to tie together that GitHub repository with this staging slot of my web app. And it'll take a few more seconds to detect that there's something different about this. I've only got the default page here. I've got a bunch of code in my uh, repository. And, and here it is. It's generating a deployment script and going through all these steps right here. And because it's a small site, it won't take very long. Let's wait and see as everything gets deployed to my staging slot. It's running it right now. Pulling everything in, compiling it, pushing it out to the right locations. I even have the check in message here when I pushed that into GitHub. So I have some idea what's going on if I'm looking at this thing. And there are logs over here that I can 
look at to see more details. And there it is, it's success. So it's done. And because it's done, I should go over here and refresh. And I'll see a change. I'll see the code instead of this default page. I see, should see what was in my GitHub source control repository in the master branch. And there we do. There, that, that's it. So um, this is now in DG Test Web App dash staging. But if I were to go back to production, which I can do from here, now and then not the staging web slot, but the DG Test Web App, and click that URL, it still has the default page here. So what I would want to do is test this, make sure everything works, click around, blah, blah, blah. Etc. Um, it's caching something right there. That's what I want to do right here. Um, and just make sure everything is working properly. And once I'm satisfied it's working properly, then I want to take it and move it from this URL to this production URL. And the way I do that is pretty simple. Right up here is a link that says swap. And swap doesn't actually move anything. All it does is there's some uh, gatekeeper in front of this that's, that says this IP address is pointing to production. This one is pointing to production dash staging. And when I swap it, I say swap staging with production. Then it changes that gateway. So it's very, very fast. We don't have to wait for files to be copied back and forth. So it'll perform, perform this slot here. And once I'm done, then what I expect to happen is that what was here in staging will become production, and what was here in production will become staging. So I'm even not only am I pushing this staging to your production, but I'm also creating a backup copy of production in staging. And the nice thing about that is that I can then swap back if for some reason this doesn't work out the way I expect it to. And it's done. I'm going to close this out and let's see if that happened. This is the staging slot. It had this and if I hit refresh here, I see what used to be in production. This is the production slot and if I hit refresh here, I see what used to be in the staging slot. So I've come up with a way of testing things before I push them out to the public and not just testing them, but testing them on hardware and on a platform and all the infrastructure that is very, very similar to what I'm using in production. And that means uh, my testing will be a lot more effective and a lot more accurate. This is David. Thank you for watching.